give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks for He has given Jesus Christ, His Son. Yeah, now let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich because of what? The Lord has died for us. And now let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich because of what the Lord. Keep. 
days. Come on, come on, give your God a praise. Hallelujah. Come on, give God the praise. Hallelujah. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good and his mercy endureth forever. Now let Israel say, give thanks unto the Lord, for his goodness and his mercies endureth forever. Hallelujah. We bring you greetings once again here from Community Refuge Church here in Manalapin, New Jersey. Hallelujah to God, where God visits us every, every Sunday. Hallelujah. Every Sunday, God is with us. Every Sunday, he's blessing us. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah. And if you want to join into the celebration, I ask you to come out and feel what God can do for you. Because God is still in the blessing business. He's still in the healing business. He's still sitting on the throne. So give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the one above. Hallelujah. We just thank and praise God for what he is doing in our lives today. Are you glad about it? Did he wake you up this morning? Are you glad about it? Hallelujah. Do you have blood running warm in your veins? Are you glad about it? You have the activities of your limbs. Are you glad about it? Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah. Woo, my God. I tell you, I'm on, I, I'm already, I'm already fired up. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Because you know why? I every time I think about God's grace, how I could have almost slipped several times. Hallelujah. But God's grace brought, reeled me back in and said it's okay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah. God is good and gracious. Woo. And I just think and praise God. I will serve no other. But I want to give God the praise for what he is doing in the name of the Lord. Are you ready? Are you ready to hear what God has to say to the children of men? Hallelujah. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to ask everyone to stand. Hallelujah. We're going to ask everyone to stand. And we are a church that believes in prayer. We believe in the power of prayer. No mountain too high, no valley too low, that God cannot come visit us. No sickness, no disease is too hard for the Father to cure. Hallelujah. All you have to do is have faith in God. Believe in the master. Oh God, hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. And Father, before we go before you today, if we don't do anything else but thank you for what you have already done. Lord, you kept us from danger, seen and unseen. Oh, my God, kept you from another day. And Father, we're grateful. We're grateful to you today. We're grateful to you today. In the name of the Lord. Whatever you have the Lord that you want the Lord to put on your mind right now. And when you put it on your mind, believe that God is able that God is able in the name of the Lord. Every head bowed, every heart pray. Most gracious God, our Father. Father, we come before you as humble as we know how. Father, we come seeking thy face, O oh God, as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Father, we thank you. We thank you for our rising up this morning, oh God, with the blood running warm in our veins. Father, we thank you 
for healing our bodies. Father, we thank you for making a way. Father, we thank you right now. In the name of Jesus, we thank you. From danger seen and unseen, Father, we glorify you. Now, Father, we invite your presence in here today. Well, you are already here, God. You're already here, and we acknowledge you today. We acknowledge you as Jehovah God. We acknowledge you as a great I am. We acknowledge you as Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah Tiskenu. Jehovah Nisi. The great I am. Hallelujah to God. My healer. My deliverer. We thank you today. Oh God in the name of Jesus. Father we ask you right now that you hear our prayer. And the supplications of our heart oh God. Uh, incline thy ear unto our prayer. And come see about your children today. Come see about your children as we cry, Abba, Father. As we cry, Holy is thy name, God. Father, we ask you right now to anoint us today. Let your fire of your anointing rest on each and every one that's here today. Each and every one that's viewing today. In the name of Jesus, we humbly submit to thy will and to thy way, God. Father, have your way today in the remaining of this service. Bless, anoint your manservant, O oh God. Bless, anoint, hallelujah, the praise team, the musicians, God, every elder, every deacon, every minister, oh God, every mother, in the name of Jesus, we cry out to your Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tell sickness to step back. Tell cancer you have no place here. Tell hallelujah every disease. Diabetes has no place here. High blood pressure has no place. For God, you dwell on the inside. Hallelujah. And we give you praise. And we magnify your God. And we glorify you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. God bless you. Amen. I love you, Lord, and I live my voice to worship thee. Oh, my soul, rejoice, take joy, my King, in what you
being so good to us, oh God. We thank you for covering us, oh God. And for this we glorify your name. We say we exalt thee. Yes, we exalt thee. Of you this morning. Oh God, we thank you this morning. Oh God, we glorify you. We magnify you, Lord God. We thank you for being so good, Lord God. We honor you right now, Jesus. We thank you, oh God, for keeping us, Lord God. We just come out to worship you and tell him, Lord, we thank you. We give you praise forever for all that you have done, for everything that you have done and all that you are about to do. God, we worship you. We just want to glorify you. We just want to magnify you. Oh, come on, put those blessed hands together. Come on, let's worship him. We praise you forever and ever and ever, for forever is a long time. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Yes, I just want to praise you forever and ever and ever for all you've done for me. Oh, blessings and glory and honor, ha, they all belong to you. I thank you, Jesus, for blessings. Yeah. Oh. 
Oh, hallelujah. He's been good. Hallelujah. I can dance. I can dance all night, all day. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah. Come on, give God the glory. Come on, give God the praise right now. Come on, come on. Praise him like you love him. Praise him like he's done something for you. Praise him. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory be to God. Glory. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. We thank God. We thank God. We thank God for his goodness. We thank God for his greatness. We thank God for his omnipresence. We thank God for his healing power. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I know I, I'm sorry, but not sorry. Because I got to give God praise for one thing right now. I got to give God glory for one thing right now. And it's my wife. Why? Because she is a breast cancer survivor. Come on, hear somebody. Hallelujah. As we celebrate our breast cancer month, she is a survivor. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hey. <laughs> Woo. <laughs> you see, some folk to understand why we praise God for this. Hallelujah to God. You see, I'm not going to tell my old testimony, but God saved her for me. Hallelujah to God. Over 25 years ago, glory to God, she lost her mother to breast cancer in 1995. Right? And then a year later, her grand, she lost her grandmother. Then a couple of months later, you were diagnosed. Well, which stage was it? Stage three. Stage three. Stage three. And look at her now. She's here giving God the praise. Won't he do it? He will do it. I'm going to, I'm trying to encourage somebody to, you know, it's okay that you're going through right now because God is still in control. Oh God. Oh God. Woo! Hallelujah to God. I, I'm, I, I need to go sit down, but I just, I just had to give God praise for that. Hallelujah. Because he kept her. <laughs> for 20 odd, some odd years, he kept her. And keeping her now. Hallelujah to God. And I don't want to sound selfish, but she, but <laughs> I don't want to sound selfish, but God kept her for me. <laughs> she, he kept her for me. And I praise God for that right now. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm sorry, not sorry. <laughs> Woo, we had to have our scripture reading. Amen. Now, my brother going to come up here and give us a scripture reading. Our brother, Ryan Goldberg, is going to come read Psalms 39, um, 37, 1 through 9. I'm asking those that have the word to send to your feet as he comes. And in the name of the Lord. Come on, bro. Come on. In the name of Jesus. Come on, put your hands together. Praise the Lord, church. How are you feeling? You'd be louder than that. Okay, I'll be reading Psalms chapter 37, verse 1 through 9. Fret not thyself because of evildoers. Neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither the green herb. Trust in the Lord 
and do good, so shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord, trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light, and thy judgment as the noonday. Rest in the Lord, and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself and any wise to do evil. For evildoers shall be cut off, but those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. Amen. Bless the reading in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Those that wait upon the Lord shall inherit the earth. Those that wait upon the Lord shall inherit the earth. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. So happy to see those of you that have joined us this morning. And as my hubby said, I am very grateful to be here. And I give God the praise and the glory. 22 years, cancer-free. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Oh, only by God's grace. Only by God's grace. Amen. Amen, amen. Well, I'll come to you this morning to read, uh, share a few announcements. Amen. Tuesday, Tuesday evening is our hour of fellowship, as we have each week. At 7 p.m. on Zoom and Facebook Live, a bishop will be teaching on the topic of the power of the gospel. The power of the gospel. Amen. The power of the gospel. So join us 7 p.m. this Tuesday evening, Zoom and Facebook Live, for our hour of fellowship and bishop's teaching on the power of the gospel. All right, um, Sister Janelle, are we having youth? No youth this week. Okay, praise the Lord. So next next Sunday, next Sunday, join us for our usual service, 10.30 a.m. for education hour. And our instructor for next week is Deacon Dwayne Fitzpatrick. Deacon Dwayne Fitzpatrick will be joining us, I mean, sorry, instructing us next Sunday at 10.30. So please join us for that. And can stay with us for our morning worship service at 11.30, 11.30 following the education hour. Amen. One other announcement, or actually two other announcements. Um, we're part of the ecclesiastical diocese, and the diocese, Bishop Jenkins, is seeking those that may be interested in serving uh, their various, I guess, positions on the, um, the various auxiliaries that they're looking for the, anyone that may be interested in serving with the diocese. So if you are interested in serving, please let Bishop Rubin know, and um, he'll be sure to pass your name and information on to Bishop Jenkins. So again, if you're interested in, part, in um, serving with the ecclesiastical diocese, please let Bishop Reuben know, and uh, he'll share your information. Amen? Okay, one other announcement. Um, we have some new offering envelopes that are a little bit different um, than what we normally have that does not list the type of offering that you want to give. So if you have or you get one of these love offering envelopes, just please mark on there what your offering is for, since there's not a line to say if it's for tithes or for general offering or so on. So once again, if you happen to get one of these love offering envelopes, please, of course, your name and information, the amount, but what your offering is for, please. Amen? Amen, amen. All right. We are a church that believes in what? The power, wonder-working, miracle-working power of prayer. Amen. We have a list. We have a list as we do. Uh, we've taken to post our prayer list online on our Facebook page. So please keep each one of us in prayer as well as lift special prayers up for those on our prayer list. Amen. Amen. And lastly, we have a special presentation. Tomorrow is a special day. 
I don't know if you all know this wonderful woman of God, one that has sacrificed her life, has shared her life and love with all of us and continues to do so. Tomorrow happens to be her birthday. Happy birthday to Lady Reuben. Lady Reuben. <laughs> Uh, I know, Bishop, you did not forget that birthday, right? I, I, I just know you didn't. You have something very special planned, Lady Ruben. <laughs> well, we want to honor you, Lady Ruben, and thank you for your love and for your service. And we pray that God continues to bless you and keep you for many, many, many years to come with strength and health. Amen, amen. We love you. Thank you. Happy birthday. I just want to thank you all. You're so wonderful each year. I get a year older. Oh, my. Oh, my. 73. 73. I'm very proud to be 73. God is good to me, and I thank him, and I thank you so very much. I love you all. Amen. Love you, Lady Ruben. All right. Uh, we will continue with our service, and we invite Elder uh, Barry Williams, our assistant pastor, to come with words of encouragement. Amen, amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Somebody shout hallelujah. I want to ask you a question. What did y'all come out to do this morning? To praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. To lift them up. As I was thinking about um, the, 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 the praise, and I'm, I'm looking for things to get better, to go higher. Anybody? I got high expectations, you know, from, from the Lord. And I believe that he's going to, to do great things. And as I thought about that, I thought about, you know, how we ex express ourselves. And I'm, I'm thinking any praise is good enough. Any, any praise, whatever your praise is, that's, that's good enough. That's what you do. You know, if it's, if it's not a dance, if it's not a, 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 a clap, whatever it is, you, you just might wave your hand. And and then waving your hand, you stir up the, the 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 presence of the Lord. So so don't be shy, you know. Just express yourself because God is still a good God. And I just want to. Um, I had this experience a couple of weeks ago. I think I talked about it a couple Sundays ago. Just want to say it again to some of you that may not have been here. I was uh, sitting on the bed watching uh, one of the preaching videos. And as I was watching the video, and I was eating at the same, it's so strange. I was eating at the same time, you know, like, you know, you, you would think God would see me eating and watching TV. He kind of, you think he would take that in consideration. But, but as I was sitting there eating, watching the, 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 the TV uh, show, the spirit of the Lord appeared in the room. He appeared above my door entrance because that's where the focus was. I was watching it and all of a sudden something drew me up towards the door. And it was like there was a cloud which was invisible, but there was definitely a presence there. And he spoke out of the present and said to me, the heaven is open. The heaven is open. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, the heaven is open. I didn't fully understand what it mean. I thought, you know, I had some ideas. And, but I know that I heard the voice of God. That it was not something that I could, uh, that the enemy can fool me with. It's something that I can go late and say, oh, well, you know what? That wasn't God. I know that was the, the, the voice of God. And so I kept that going, and, and, I, and I, as I began to hear it, something pulled me off the bed, me chewing food and whatever, into a praise. I said, you know, I thought God would, oh, you know, wait. Hallelujah. I had to give God a praise right then because the presence was there. And then just a few, a couple weeks or so later, I'm in the bathroom on Friday night. Y'all was there. And we was preparing ourselves to sing uh, for the concert, for the true worship retreat and all of those things. So I'm minding my business again. And I'm in the bathroom getting ready to, to, to come out and, and wash my hands. As I stood to the sink, the Spirit of the Lord told me 
I'm releasing glory in the earth. I'm releasing glory in the earth. And I understood what he meant. It wasn't just in the church. It was in the earth. And then as I woke up, I believe a couple days ago, uh, I woke up, I had a dream or whatever it was, and he, and he was saying that this glory is in the people. The glory is in the people. In other words, he's getting ready to glorify himself using you and me. He's going to use you and me to glorify himself. In other words, he's going to do something in you, through you, something getting ready to happen to you, with you, that's going to bring glory in the earth. Hallelujah. He's getting ready to pour it out. Hallelujah. So I'm getting ready and getting myself prepared to receive the glory, to receive whatever it is that God is getting ready to do. And, and, and I'm, I'm talking about it and telling you because now I know what he's going to do because now I clearly heard the word of the Lord. I felt his spirit a few years pushing and saying, I'm getting ready to do something. And now he's speaking and he's making things more clear. God is getting ready to do something. God is getting ready to do something. Some getting ready to come. And it's getting ready to hit where you are. And the vision that was in my mind is, is that we're getting ready to walk in it. We're getting ready to live in it. We're getting ready to drive it. We're getting ready to work in it. Some of y'all are going to be over whatever it is. You're going to be over it. You're going to be running it. Y'all hear what I'm saying? You're going to be operating in whatever it is that's going to bring glory and honor to the name of the Lord. So I'm telling you, get ready. Get ready. Hallelujah. Get ready because it's getting ready to be poured out on you. So whatever your praise is, get ready. Get ready with your praise. Get ready with your, with your testimony because God is getting ready to do it in the earth. Okay, that's better. That's better. And the Lord was moving so, and I was just so rejoicing. The Lord just had filled my soul so on, on that Sunday. And so the entire time that I was here, I was thinking in my heart, something is going to happen. Something. Something is going to happen, and we always think something is ne negative going to happen. And I kept saying, something going to happen, something going to happen. And so, yes, yes, yes. Okay, so Monday, I go uh, to the mall, and a lady backs into my car. I say, see, I knew something. The devil is always there to try to take God's praise away from you, his thoughts from you, to, to, for letting you know. Now, he's getting ready to do something great. He is getting ready to do something great. For you to just get that little bit of doubt that he's not going to do it. So he hit my car. So that's all right. You hit the car. All right. And so I went on home. I, I, I said, okay. They hit my car. <laughs> and um, then on, two, was it Tuesday or Wednesday? I got sick. It was Tuesday or Wednesday. I got sick, and oh my God, I said, now, Lord, what, what is going on now? I, I thought I passed the test. <laughs> I thought I had passed the test. What in the world is going on? But the Lord leads us into green pastures to make us rest and to make us start considering him, to think about nothing but him, all the cares, because all the material things we have in this life, even our life, even our life 
is but a vapor. It's here today. It's gone today. And so we have to wear this world as a loose garment. And he, I think he's trying to let me know that nothing really matters. Nothing but him and praising him and serving him and loving him and giving him all the glory and the honor that's due to no matter what's going on to keep giving him the glory and the honor. And he brought this song to my heart. And it's a very, very old song. It's by Andre Krause. I'm not coming to the 20th century yet. <laughs> Courtney, Courtney, uh, Andre Krause. But it was such a beautiful song because it made me think about God and what he's getting ready to do. It says, it says, if heaven never was promised to me, and it says, you may ask me why I serve the Lord. Is it just for heaven gain? Do we just think it's just to die and go to heaven? No, no, no. Or to walk those mighty streets of gold. We're all, all looking forward to walking them streets of gold because we talk about nothing but streets of gold, streets of gold. We're all looking forward to that. Or to hear the angels sing. Is it just to drink from the fountain that never shall run dry? Or is it to live forever in that sweet old by and by. And it says, but if heaven never was promised to me. Oh, Lord, help me now. Neither God's promise to live eternally. It's been worth just having the Lord in my life. God is so good. He takes care of everything. And while I was laying there sick, that's all I could do is lay there and be sick. I could just think, and I thought about all the wonderful things that God has done for me. And I began to thank him and praise him and to glorify him. And it was a whole different realm of praise that I was in because I was just focused on him. And I think he wants us to just focus on him, how great he is, how great is our God. Sing to me, how great is our God. Oh, hallelujah. Just to think the Lord blesses each and every day of our lives. Just to give focus that he's concerned about every aspect of our lives. If you stub your toe. God is concerned about that. If someone backs into your car, God is concerned about that. We're just so grateful to have this kind of God, this kind of God. I see the Lundies, and they also got the flu and the virus. You know, we stop wearing our mask as conscientious. And so it's not just COVID now. It's colds and viruses and flus and all the other stuff. And that's why we keep encouraging folks, keep that mask on and deal with social distancing because we're going through a period of, of a season. And they warned us, they warned us. They said October going into the winter is going to be a challenging month. And Elder Bullock, who's back, he told me, his doctor told him, everybody is going to wind up with COVID at least once, if not twice. And my, my response was, well, in a three-year period, you're going to catch a cold, aren't you? So if you go along with life and without the precautions, you're going to eventually get this, that, or the other. So let's be cautious and let's be grateful that we have a God that's concerned about us. I just want to thank God as I'm looking around the room. I often use that expression one is an insignificant number to achieve greatness. And when I make my calls leading into Sunday, I will typically say I look forward to sharing the word. And I look forward to hearing from our other presenters, from the praise team. And we've been blessed today. Praise the Lord. Elder's testimony uh, about Sister Tucker. And, and you, could, you could hear his sincerity. He said, I needed somebody special. I needed somebody to look after me and look with me and this, that, and the other. And uh, 
he was testifying. He was testifying. It's interesting because I told Lady Rubin, I asked her the question, how does it feel that God saw you as the only woman, I don't want to say crazy enough, uh, but whatever, committed enough to stick with me through all the years of this, that, and the other. If you knew all which transpired with the traveling and the going here and the going there, and uh, virtually every time I'm on a plane, I look to my right or my left, there's Lady Reuben. So, Elder, I know what you mean exactly. And then Elder Williams blessed us so richly with sharing. But, Elder, I've got to admit, every time you get up, I keep thinking about that signature praise. Praise the Lord, that signature praise, that signature praise. And, and he was able to do it so well. Uh, he had Mother Harper down to a science, Lady Reuben, myself. And you just blessed me that day with the signature praise. Don't you feel good that God is who he is? Do you ever give thought to the fact that he didn't have to be the kind of God that he is? He's God. He could have been a mean old God. He could have just been whatever. But he's God, he's God, he's God. So glad that we have uh, some honored guests today. I'm looking at one today, uh, Sister it's not Chambers, is it? No. That's Sister Chambers. Sister Juanita. And Sister Juanita, I called. She, she wanted a, a ride to church. And she said, Bishop, I, I met you when we worked at MCOC. That was in 1967. I said, oh, Lord, oh, Lord. That was when you talk about being a young man. Now, she hasn't gotten any older. I've, I've got a couple years older. But that was when I was a Vista volunteer just out of college. Praise the Lord. And that's when I met Sister Wolfolk and her family and this one and that one. So she has a good memory too. <laughs> 1967, 68, I worked with MCOC as a Vista volunteer. I want to thank each of you that's watching on Zoom and Facebook we have started our morning reflections appeal, and, and each year, praise the Lord, we invite you to invest in our morning reflections appeal, uh, and you've been good. You've been good to us, and, and those that are able to give $35 or more, we have one of our uh, magnetic calendars, and it seems to be a very popular thing, so we're so grateful. And to those of you that have been giving regularly, to community refuge, to our regular offerings. I thank you, I thank you, I thank you. Our cash app, praise the Lord, dollar sign, see our church, uh, communityrefuge.org, those that go online. And of course, our address is PO Box 725. But you've been a blessing to us, and we do not take it for granted. And we use all that you sent to boost the, the ministry and do things that are so needful. So again, we thank you. We thank you. I'm going to ask Mother Williams if she could give us a selection today. I'll tell you, this is a singing lady. Praise the Lord. She is a singing lady. Then we're going to have prayer. And as Mother's coming to prepare and Elder's coming to play, uh, I'm putting a couple special names before you today. Uh, a good friend of ours, Deacon Ralph Pettifor, has some serious health issues. And Brother White, Fred White, you, you know Fred. Fred's been diagnosed. I wish he would have been here to hear the testimony with third stage prostate cancer. And um, we're praying. We're praying and knowing that God can do all things. Mother, bless us and we'll come back with prayer. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord one more time. He's worthy. He's worthy to be praised. And the song says, uh, I have heard of a land far away strain. And I know that I know that everybody that's saved want to get to that land. 
whenever the Lord says so. And one thing we got to be ready to get to that point where we'll never, never grow old. I don't care how old we get, but we'll never grow old. I have heard of a land where we'll never it's on a way train tis the beauty of the soul it was built by Jesus Jesus on high where we'll never excuse my words we'll never shall die It's in a land where we'll never grow. sanctuary would you stand with me I mentioned the name Deacon Pettifor I mentioned the name Fred White I could add a host of other names people that send me requests series of grandparents praying for their grandchildren series of men and women wrestling with serious health issues God is able to touch each of those cases each time I look around the room and recall how God has stepped in miracle working so listen to Mother Williams I think about her multiple bypass surgery when I look at this one and that one I know God has worked a miracle in so many lives I look into the mirror and know that it could have been another way in my life we're praying to a God that is both concerned and has the power to touch in every situation. As we read through the scriptures, it's not just one type of 
miracle we read about. A multitude, a multitude of diverse miracles. And not just physical, emotional, spiritual, life changing. Elder Williams talked about God is getting ready to do something in each of the lives of his people. How many need a life changing touch from the Lord? God to step into some part of your life. You've been trying to change it, adjust it, but it's a miracle needed situation. And I'm so glad we serve, we praise and worship a miracle working God. Father, in the name of your Son, we thank you and we praise you and we worship you. We cry out to a God that's able to do all things. Lord, help us right now. Help us right now to push away the doubts. To push away the fears. To push away the anxiety that says it's not going to happen. Let us look unto the hills from whence cometh our help. Lord, help us today as you send your word that it might be brought richly and deeply into our spirit that you might remind us that you're a God that can do all things. Bless your sons, bless your daughters right now and we'll praise you, we'll worship you and we'll magnify you in Jesus name all the believers tell them thank you in Jesus name amen 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 the eighth chapter of the gospel according to Mark beginning at verse 22 And he cometh to Bethesda, and they bring a blind man unto him, and besought him to touch him. And he took the blind man by the hand, and led him out of the town. And when he had spit on his eyes and put his hands upon him, he asked him if he saw aught. And he looked up and said, I see men as trees walking. After that, he put his hands again upon his eyes and made him look up. And he was restored and saw every man clearly. I want to use for thought today, Lord, touch me again. When I wrote that down, I wrote down one of the expressions I like to use. Good is the enemy of excellence. As we read this account of Jesus as he interacted with his disciples and with the multitude, he understood their vision was not yet 2020. Step by step, he revealed this to them and this to them. In the beginning, he was a teacher. He became a prophet. In their minds, he became a miracle worker. He became somebody sent by God. It wasn't to the end of his ministry when he declared, when you have seen me, you have seen the Father. Growth in our spiritual walk with the Lord, as you know, is a process. But within that process is the necessity to keep seeing more and more about Jesus. Our sight, our vision is a gradual one. Jesus understood his apostles' vision 
And when we read scripture, we begin to realize that in everything recorded, there's a outward message that's easy to see, and there's a deeper message that it takes time to carefully look and meditate to receive what God is saying. And this account of the man was not just the fact that he could heal a man, but he was making a, a statement to each one of us. I touched you, but you don't see everything. I touched you and I've opened your eyes to a portion of who I am. I touched you. And I elevated you from somebody who was a non-believer to someone who is now a believer. But simply because you're a believer doesn't mean you see everything. Each one of us can testify what we see today, we didn't see yesterday. And what we saw yesterday, we didn't see five or ten years ago. The Lord keeps opening, keeps opening, keeps opening, keeps opening, opening our eyes. And when we stay close enough to Jesus, he's able to talk to us, reveal things to us, He's able to share things that are important for us to grasp. So he took this situation with a blind man. So a lot of side messages in this scripture. They brought the man. You have the power to bring people to Jesus. You have the authority to take those that might not have the faith that you have that might not know what you know about God, but you can bring them. Lord, I have somebody that needs you to touch them. I have somebody that needs you to reveal to them that you're a God that's able. They brought the man to Jesus. They brought it with the intent that he would touch the man and the man would receive the sight. As you read the chapter, you find out that the Lord had just taken seven loaves and some few fish and fed the multitude with fragments left over. And I suppose they said to themselves, if he could do that, he can do anything. Anybody have that testimony? If God could do that, he can do anything. God could bless me in that situation. What's going to stop them from blessing me in this situation? They brought the man to Jesus. And how God dealt with it is a statement. You don't know how I'm going to bless you. What I'm going to do might upset you. But you're not going to know how. I'm going to bless you. We try to tell God how we need to be blessed. You ever been in a financial situation? And you're telling the Lord exactly how he needs to bless you. Lord, do this, do this, do this. And the Lord said, look, I'm God. I'm not limited. You know, God can just speak. God can lay hands. God can command. Now, in this case, he took his spit. I know somebody tried to do that to you. You be ready to fight. <laughs> say, no say, Holy Ghost, no Holy Ghost. You be ready to fight. But Jesus was making a statement. I'm going to bless the way I want to bless. And you can't figure it out how I'm going to do it. But when God speaks to you, I don't believe we're going to worry about the spit part. But when God speaks, he told one man through the prophet, go dip yourself in the Jordan River. The man got upset. I came all the way to dip myself in some dirty water. Whatever God says, Learn how to say yes. 
took that spit. And then he took the man out of town. Another lesson. Some things God wants to do between you and him. Nothing to do with anybody else. God will take you from the crowd, from the multitude, and just show you that he's God all by himself. The same way there's sometimes you can't get anybody to pray with you, pray for you. Not that they don't like you or aren't concerned. But there's sometimes God wants to show you I'm God all by myself. And I can work miracles if there's nobody else around. Took the man out of town. And she touched the man. He said, all right, tell me. Do you see aught? It's apparent that this man was not born blind because he knew what trees look like. I see tre- men that look like trees walking. Now, sometimes we take that as all we're going to get. God has blessed me. I, I was blind yesterday. Now at least I can see. But good is the enemy of excellence. Look at folks that are praying for children. I don't pray for my children not to be on drugs, not to be in prison. I want them saved. I want them to know God. I don't pray just for to get by. I want God to bless from the crown of the head to the sole of the feet. All these things that we accept, good. But God is an excellent God. Even uses a phrase to make us more than a conqueror. To make us the head only. You hear that word only? Not just the head sometime, but the head only. Whenever God blesses you, be thankful. Be grateful. You've heard me talk about the plateau. You come to the plateau, give God the praise. But God is not a partial blesser. God doesn't just bless in a small manner. He blesses in a way that we can testify. Look and see what God has done for me. Praise the Lord. I don't pray for marriages, for folks just to to just accommodate one another. I want them to be blessed, shouting the victory. Step by step in every situation. Thank God for the good. But look for the excellent. Take that spirit that proclaimed, Lord, touch me again. I'm shouting now, but I want to shout some more. You've been good to me, but I want the rest of the blessing. Don't you know God has something else for you? As long as you're walking on planet earth, God has something else for you. Something to use you as a testimony to proclaim that God is able to do all things. Think about how much he loves you. He didn't go to Calvary and die for you, shed his blood for you just to make it. As we heard in the lesson today, he made us a part of his family, part of his body to to open up the blessings of God and say that I'm I'm seeing in a way that I I can't really make out everything. Seeing these men that look like trees walking. The Lord said, come here, buddy. He touched him again. The Bible tells us he saw clearly. I want each and every one of us to come to a place in God. I want another touch. I want everything that God has for me. And don't you know he has some things that you can't comprehend? You quote that scripture, don't you? He's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, more than we ask or even think. What's God saying? I've got things for you you can't comprehend yet. But I got a spirit. 
This is why we need to stay close to God. Able to hear the Spirit. Maybe at first you can't exactly understand all, but you just keep listening. Then you stay before the Lord 21 days. Talk to me, talk to me, talk. To me. Let me see it. But I can prophesy right now. I can point to each one here, point to those on Zoom in favor. God has something else. Oh, come on and praise him with me. Feel God's spirit saying to you, I got something for you. So you shout for what I did yesterday. Shout for what I'm doing right now. But then tell me, Lord, touch me again. I want everything. Praise the Lord. And if you don't want what you want, I might ask God for you, for him to give what supposed to come to you to me. But it's got your name on it. When God called you, let me take it back one step further. When God predestinated you, don't you know you were predestinated? Praise the Lord. You heard the testimony. God predestinated this woman for, for elder. I told Lady Reuben, you were predestinated. I needed a unique person. I needed somebody that go through a crazy lifestyle and keep on praising God. Keep on loving God. Keep on magnifying God. You were predestinated. You didn't fall into salvation. Only reason you love God is because he first loved you. Not only did he love you through some kind of emotion, but he died for you. Do you realize if nobody else had ever sinned, Jesus would have gone to Calvary for you? If nobody else ever violated the law, Jesus would have gone to Calvary for you. You ought to look up and tell the Lord, thank you. You ought to look up and say, Lord, I thank you for the kind of love you've demonstrated. But when he predestinated you, when he called you, when he justified you, he also has another step. He wants to glorify you. Wants to take his spirit and not just put it inside of it so you can speak in tongues or, or shout, but that the glory of God I tried to, that the glory of God would be revealed. God wants you to have a relationship with him. That when you walk by other folks, they see something. Doesn't matter what you're wearing or what it might, the time might be, but when they see you, they can feel something. That person is unique. That person different. In fact, they're going to ask you, what makes you so special? And you're going to tell them, Jesus did it for me. Jesus did it for me. Jesus did it for me. Because when he was blessing me, I did not become satisfied. In fact, I will not be satisfied to awake in his likeness. I want you to hear that. The Bible tells us to be content with such things that we have. But it states, I will not be satisfied until I awaken in his likeness. And I'm not talking just about the rapture. I want to walk in his will right now. I want to walk in his spirit right now. I want to walk in a way that I can see him clearly. He's not just my teacher. He's not even just a miracle worker. And he's not just somebody sent by God. He's God manifested. Oh, somebody ought to praise him. Somebody ought to praise him. He's God manifested in the flesh. He's the one that moved with the spirit over the face of the earth. He's the one that created all things. Praise the Lord, and God is saying to us right now, I'm looking for somebody that wants another touch. I'm looking for somebody that's not just satisfied with shouting on Sunday morning. 
not just knowing who I am on Sunday morning, but I want somebody on a Wednesday afternoon or a Thursday night or a Friday morning and that's able to, to feel my presence because I got a handful of miracles. I got a handful of deliverance. I got a handful of all those things they've been crying for. Don't you know God is trying to bless you? He's trying to pour out his spirit upon you in a way that you have not understood. But you and I need to just tell him today, Lord, touch me again. Touch me from the crown of my head to the sole of my feet. Touch my hand, touch my feet, touch me all over, and I praise you, I worship you. I'm looking for somebody in the house. Oh, I'm looking for somebody that wants what God has for him. I'm looking for somebody that know that God called you. There was a time you were walking in darkness, thinking you were having a good time. But God said, I have something more for you. I've got joy unspeakable and full of glory. And God has taught you enough that when the right note is hit or the right thought is expressed, you can lift your voice and shout hallelujah. But I want more than just that. I want to wake up every morning shouting the victory. I want to go to sleep every night saying, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I praise you. Lord, I worship you. I don't want to just say something. I want to feel the anointing. Somebody talk to me. Anybody in the house want to feel that anointing? Want to feel what God has for you? Oh, come on and tell him, touch me again, Jesus. Touch me again, Jesus. Touch me again, Jesus. Come on and say it with me. Lord, touch me again. Let me feel your presence and your anointing. And when the songs are sung, praise the Lord, I want to hear it not just with my ears. I want to hear it in my spirit. When the words are spoken, I don't want to just in my intellect, let it sink inside of me. And I want somebody today to just let God touch you. Come on, everybody stand with me. Let's talk to Jesus. Let's talk to Jesus. Let's talk to Jesus. Let's talk with them, saints. Let's talk with them. And say, Lord, you've been good to me. But I know you got something else. You've been good. But I feel something is about to happen. You've been good to me. But I believe you got something else for me. I'm saying, Lord, touch me. I don't want the preacher to touch me today. But Lord, I want you to touch me. I want you to feel God putting his hands upon you. He knows just how to hug you. He knows how to just move you. He knows how to let you feel that something good is about to happen. Can I get a praise in the house? Can I get a hallelujah? Can I get somebody to shout it with me? Lord, touch me. Don't let me lead the same way. I've got some pretty good vision, but I want 2020. And when I get that, give me 2015. But let me keep on seeing. Let me see your love. Let me see your power. Let me see your glory. Let me feel it. That I don't need anybody to tell me to praise you. You took the man out of town. Nobody with him. I'm going to touch you. I'm going to touch you. See yourself out of town. All by yourself. Lord, touch me. Feel it right now. I can feel God touching. I can feel him getting ready. He's walking around every house on Zoom and Facebook. Getting ready to touch somebody. Lord, touch me. Lord, touch me. Lord, touch me. Lord, touch me. In the name of Jesus. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, come on and 
praise him with me. Come on and praise him with me. Come on and praise him. Oh, hallelujah. I can feel God right now. Ask him. Do you want me to touch you again? Oh, Lord, I say thank you. Oh, hallelujah. I could keep on saying, but I want to praise him. Because I can feel him right now. I can feel him right now. Oh, hallelujah. I feel the healing. I feel the deliverance. I feel the salvation. I can feel God stepping in. Putting his hands. Lord, I say thank you. Come give us a song. And while we're hearing the song from our praise team, those of us that have that offering to bring, you, just lay it at the altar. Give us a song. Thank you. Lord. Listen to the words. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Thank you. benediction we were blessed today we heard a testimony of what happened yesterday we heard a sharing of what God has in store for us tomorrow we heard God speak to us don't be left out of what I have for you I've been good to you, saying the Lord, but I got another touch for you. Spend this week just saying to the Lord, touch me again. And as we thank God for Sister Tucker's testimony, some of us have wore pink today, Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Let's pray for all those one of our friends from Kentucky just had surgery seemed to be quite successful breast cancer so many in men prostate cancer let us be praying let us be praying gracious father in the name of your son Jesus we end today by asking you Touch us again. Touch us once more that we might receive all that you have for us. And we'll continue to praise, to worship, and to magnify your holy name. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Amen.
Thank you. 